Hi guys, nothing to prove here. Today's a beautiful day. Cause any day one can be out on two wheels is a beautiful day. And yeah, look at what we're on today. Aprilia is throwing their hat into the adventure bike arena. Who? Aprilia, yeah. Let me first just say it doesn't look like an Aprilia, doesn't feel like an Aprilia, and it doesn't sound like an Aprilia right there, right off the bat. Also, let's take a look at where this thing fits in on the middleweight adventure chart. You can see there, I've got these arranged by weight. And what do you notice right at the top there? The Tenere 700. This is the benchmark that Aprilia engineers were aiming for and looks like they nailed it with the weight. Then you look over there in the power numbers. Looks like they nailed it with the power numbers too compared to the Tenere. Also, what do you notice is the engine configuration, all of these bikes in this group. Notice a trend here? Yeah, if you don't have a parallel twin, you're not in. But why are parallel twins so common? Because they're the lightest and most efficient use of com and being compact as far as twins and the layout there, even compared to the V-twins, look at here. We do have three V-twins, uh, one air-cooled actually and it's transverse mounted and of course that's the Moto Guzzi and look at the weight of that though, but that's because it's also shaft drive. So if you guys are looking for a middleweight adventure and you want air-cooled and shaft drive, you only got one choice, that one. Nobody else is shaft drive and nobody else is air-cooled. Now, how do these numbers feel on the street? Oh, let's talk about the powertrain, shall we? Oh, flawless Aprilia transmission. <laughs> Whether you're using the clutch or not, flawless. That's A++. Uh, two thumbs way way up uh, and the, the power delivery seems diminished from the RSN from the Tuono 660s here at three grand it's not much you really got to get the IPMs higher there it's right around four and a half or five thousand RPMs which I hmm not sure I'm liking that, Aprilia. But other than that, uh, its uh, powertrain is totally controllable, totally Aprilia, yeah. Uh, but not necessarily in a good way in an adventure bike. So what do you mean? Uh, I think they could have had more low down torque. They needed to tune this a little more because uh, most of your other middle weight adventure bikes will have more torque available lower in the RPM range than this. Especially the, the Tiger 900. Okay, that's a bigger motor. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it, see, it's right there at 35 is where I want it and it's not there. And then four, no, nothing. Five. Oh, there we go. Now we're starting to get it at five. So, okay, but for what it is, it's only a, a 659cc parallel twin. So for what it is, two thumbs way, way up, guys. Yeah, no problem. Boom, boom. All right, guys, let's come up to the suspension. Fully adjustable KYBs here and there, manually, of course. 240 mils of travel, <laughs> yeah, on a 300 mil disc, four piston Brembos. Notice they're axial mount, not radio mount. Uh, they don't even look like four Gen 4, those are Gen 3s. Uh, and yeah, 240 mils of travel here on the rear, and look at that linkage down underneath there. I wonder if that'll get a better shot, yeah. And then your one piston Brembo on the back mounted to a 260 mil disc. Now, how did this feel on the street? Now the chassis, well, let's, let's try that rear brake, shall we? It's, oh yeah, I could tell right where it was gonna lock up. No, that, that was good. Uh, the front, let's try it. Oh yeah, those are, those are excellent. Good feel, good feedback. 
Uh, it does dip, uh, as all bikes do when you apply that much pressure, but a little bit excessive. I would have to tighten up maybe the preload a little bit, maybe a little bit of the compression, yeah, probably. Uh, but overall, but then that would change. Hmm. It is pretty good. This 240 mils of travel. Oh yeah, this is pretty good. I, I am liking this suspension. Uh, and it's very hmm, docile when it needs to be docile. But then if you're feeling a little aggressive, you can throw this over. Uh, I think though I'd like the Tenere a hair better than this. Maybe. I, oh, it's, it's so close, guys. Uh, I, they're both KYBs. Just the Tenere just doesn't have as much travel. Uh, that's all. So I'm splitting hairs here. Uh, I would like to take both off-road, the Tenere and this, and then see how that would be. But overall, hmm. yeah, this, this chassis, the brakes and suspension together, along with this new frame uh it, it's it's working uh it, i i want i i want to say it doesn't feel like an aprilia chassis that's the difference that i'm noticing here and that's the interesting thing i think uh, that i'm uh, i'm i'm coming to terms with so oh well yeah but Two thumbs way, way up, guys, on this chassis. It's a brand new chassis, yeah. Now let's continue on with the rest of this bike. You can see here, yeah, what do you notice? Yeah, it's not bolted on, it's welded on. So if you crash, you're gonna have some problems. High mount muffler, typical with these adventure bikes. It's a swing arm, normal swing arm, chain, of course. 860. Uh, I thought that this would not be very comfortable uh, but after the first 10 20 kilometers I was like ah, I'm not gonna like this but then after that I started to like it I'm like oh wow this is comfortable very surprised you can ride in any position you want whether way up here in the tank or all the way back here guys this I was actually liking this seat I was saying it's 860, you can go all the way up to 880 or all the way down to 840. So you can get the comfort seat options and you can go down 20 mils or up 20 mils with those options. 18 liter tank, that's pretty good. With the fuel economy that this thing gets, you're gonna get some good range, about 450. That's pretty good. Uh, Yamaha has fallen way short of that unless you get the new world raid yamaha with the ugly dual tanks and then it's a 23 liter and yamaha is saying well then you're going to get way over 500 kilometers theoretical range again depending on how you ride now 204 kilos as stated in the beginning how does these 204 kilos feel say in the city the in-town manners uh, is, is very atypical of an adventure bike and not typical of an Aprilia. This is not your typical Aprilia, guys, in any way, shape, or form. This totally feels like the Yamaha Tenere. Uh, lots of similarities. Does like the dip in? Yes, it's a 21-inch front and 18-inch rear. So that's gonna take a little bit of time to, for it to dip in, but with only 204 kilos, hmm, it's pretty good. I'm liking it a lot. What's that? Oh, that's an old hot yeah. Oh, I gotta turn here. I gotta pay attention to what I'm doing. But uh, yeah, well, you saw me right there. Just boom, boom, boom. This thing just turns in on a dime. And on a 21 inch, uh, that's pretty good. Uh, but I do notice that uh, the gears, first, second, and third, are very short. You got to shift really soon. See, here in the city, I'm not even, I'm doing 45 and fourth gear. If I was on a 1250 GS, okay, that's a 1250, I would be in second <laughs> or third. 
Well, I know on my RT I would be in third, but in the GS maybe third, fourth. But, but this is, uh, it's getting it guys in town. Loving this thing in town. Uh, two thumbs way, way up for in town. Now on, on this country road, this do, doing a hundred, so 62 miles an hour. Uh, this is something I could do all day on this. This is nice. The, the 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 posture is sitting straight up, straight up, guys. And the arm position is very comfortable. Very uh, heavyweight adventure bike to, to be exact. And uh, very very similar to the 900 Tiger. This riding position. All right, guys, now let's come up here to the cockpit standard controls that you're going to see on the uh, on the uh, RS and the Tawano 660s and standard over here, too. Uh, yeah, you can get a heated grips option. This one does not have it. And also, oh, this does have cruise control, though. Uh, here, five inch TFT standard again with all the other bikes even on the moto guzzi's you'll you'll see this tft on the like the uh tt the v85 tt same thing uh and also the uh rs rsv4 all the other apulias same thing so i'm not going to go into big details but as you s s sit back that is pretty far away from you which in adventure riding, yeah, you're not going to hit run into this very much. And you got the nice mount there for a navigation device if you want. So overall, uh, TFT, no complaints. It is kind of small, five inch. Uh, you know, if you go to the 900 Tiger, you know, it's more. Uh, or the 850GS, that's more. Uh, it's bigger TFTs, I shouldn't say more. Yeah, and it is more money too. Yeah, let's just be honest. Overall, guys, verdict. If you're looking for something that's different in the middleweight adventure bike, this will get it right there. Uh, if you want to be fuel efficient and lightweight, this checks those boxes. What would I prefer? The Tenere 700 or this? Ooh. They both feel very similar. Uh, when Aprilia set out as the Tenere as a benchmark, they nailed it. It feels like a 700 Tenere. Um, if I'm going to do more street riding, though, I would probably take this over the Tenere. But if I'm going to do more off-road, then I would go to the Tenere. That's just my feeling on that. I haven't ridden the Tenere in two years, though. So it's, maybe I need to hop onto one of those again. Maybe the World Raid, if I can get my hands on one of those, I'll take that for a spin. All right, guys. Overall, yeah, Aprilia, you're getting two thumbs up from me. Take a look at them, guys. It's a little more money than the 700 Tenere, but nicely equipped. You equip them both out, you're going to look at the same amount of cash. All right, guys. As usual, hope you've enjoyed this review. Ride safe, guys. That's most important. And number two, guys, ride like there's nothing to prove. Take care. Cheers.